Hello everyone, my name is Tuli and I'm working at Google and I'm focusing on LVM libc on the math functions. So today I'm going to talk about how we use the modern CPU instructions to improve the performance of uh, the LVM libc math library. So first now, uh, let's take a quick overview about the LVM libc math library. So our goal is to re-implement all the uh, C standard library math functions. And um, currently we are aiming for a C99, but um, if we have time we can Shoot for C23. Okay, and um, our highest priority is going to be the accuracy of the library and um, also the performance because without the performance, you can just simply use the MPFR in your lab. And uh, we try to support, uh, support most of the multi platform, and even though our code, in our code, we will try to take advantage of um, the platform to speed it up if possible. And um, we also aim for supporting other use cases that might come up later, such as the um, the embedded system or another use case. Okay, and uh, the current status is that we have implemented almost all of the single precision functions, and we started to work on the double precision. And currently, our uh, accuracy we test it on um, x86, 64, and ARP 64. And, um, for all, for for those that single precision function we implemented, they are all correctly valid with respect to the four normal mode, and the performance is comparable to GLC, at least we tested on Linux x86 Linux. For more information, you can follow the link on them um, to uh, the up-to-date status. All right, so our highest priority for implementing, re implementing the math function is the accuracy. So how, how accurate you, do we want to? We want to be as accurate as possible, and the ultimate goal is to make all the functions that correctly valid with respect to all the routing modes that are possible. And um, our routing modes, the routing mode is decided by the full point environment that we get from the app. FN uh, header, it's like going to be slightly different because the other correctly valid um, math library out there, they might aim for different configs or different um, ways to do it. Okay, and now uh, why we aim for the code to be correctly valid? One of the biggest um, benefits is that the, it's going to be consistent. So the results going to be bit identical and they are well defined on, across the platforms. So, since, so now when you're updating your math libraries, you don't have to worry about if it's on AR64 or on um, Intel or maybe Rix5. And um, with this, uh, since the output is well defined, we can use the um, floating points output for the golden test, similar to the, the way you do with integers. And um, currently, for testing, we compare our outputs with the MPFR and other um, accurate math libraries out there. And um, for single precision, since the input is range is small enough, we just run the exhaustive test for them on the platforms. For double precision might need some more work. Okay, our second um, priority is the performance. So we want to avoid the pitfalls of the IBM um, accurate math libraries, which was the first math library attempted to make correctly valid functions for double precision. So the problem with um, the um, IBM math accurate math library is that they have a very long, very, very long tail. Um, of the latency, because um, when uh, the fast pass fail, they fall back to use 800 bits of uh, precision to compute the math functions, and that makes the latency on the worst case maybe like thousands or more than that times than the average. And uh, there are more advanced, recent advances in um, floating points and arithmetic field where they people analyze the worst case scenarios, and in most of the functions, the extra precision needed can be a lot smaller than uh, 800. Um, some of them is like 100, 410 is enough. And um, using that, together with all the modern CPU instructions that are added in the recent years, we, are, we will be able to make the math function both accurate and performant. So today, I'll focus more about the uh, effect of the routing instructions and the fuse multiplier add instructions on um, implementing single precision. For the multi-platform support, even though in um, LibC ourselves, we try to not to implement everything in assembly. We try to avoid that. But at some, in some cases, um, in assembly is not avoidable, if, especially for the platform, and we do take advantage of that. But on the other hand, actually, if we can, if there are compiler built-ins that are available, then using them is actually much better, since those implementations, they're going to get into, they're going to participate in the compiler optimization. Um, so, but you need to be care a little bit careful because, at least for us, we are at the Lipsy. 
and some of the compiler building do have the dependency backup to the libcx fallback cases. So for example, the building land or building anime, we cannot use it at all, because they call back to our list. So, but there are some low dependency building intrinsics, such as um, on the Intel, on the x 64 and the ARM level on um, the ARM64. But um, the support for the stack of functions on both, on both sides are limited, and they are also not complete, especially on the ARM side. And um, so for those cases, we do fall back to the Inlab assembly, which had very low dependency, but unfortunately, we have to maintain all the list of possible um, instructions. So for example, in the case of the FMA, if we use the viewing FMA with AB minus C, if you, right now if we do it on ARM, then with the inline assembly, then actually it's combined to two instructions. Unless actually we can combine them into one instruction called FM sub. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right, so the overview of the math implementation for the transcendent, transcendental functions. Overall, it's simply, so in here I give an example on the side functions. Overall, the, the first step is we do the range reductions, in which case, a lot of time we can have the rounding happens. And those rounding instructions, if you implement it naively, you convert it, you convert your floating points to integers, and then you convert it back into the floating point. And that will actually kill the throughput of the uh, implementation. With the rounding instruction, actually, you can see a lot. And um, the latest step is polynomial approximations, and then combine them. All of those have a lot of chance for the FMA to join. And I'll leave the exercise for the audience to do the step three, if you have really one. All right, so um, for the summary, um, we are going to show some uh, results that we have so far. So for, for summary, we will we test 19 functions, uh, floating points, transcendental functions, for single precision. And we use the probe script from the COMAC project, which is another quality environment project uh, run by uh, researchers at India. And um, the, for the input branches of the test, you can uh, follow the links that will take, the, take you to uh, their project. And um, so from uh, single operation function, mostly you will care about the throughput and the latency. Some of the numbers we will, I will put up as the reciprocal throughput so that we will look at the same trend as the latency to repeat. And um, we tested on um, Zen 1 and uh, on the um, XA654 between um, SSC 2, which is default the guarding instruction, and with both guarding and FMA. For the ARM64, um, currently we focus on ARM V8. Floating points. We haven't explored the um, other extension yet, but we do expect a similar training result as the XA664. Right. Um, so, as a result, um, on average, we see that our implementations without any um, extra routing instructions on the FMA have 20% throughput higher than the current GLC, with the Slightly uh, lower latency than the GDC. With the uh, routing instructions, the throughput improvements increase to 50%, and the latency reduces about 4%. And with both routings and FMA come together, we double, on average, we double the throughput of um, GDC, and we reduce the latency by 1.6. So here's the plot of the reciprocal throughput. And you can try yourself. So the blue color is uh, how much time it takes for GDC to do to perform this operation in a second. And uh, the red one is uh, the default SSC2. The yellow color is for when we have the routing instructions available. And the FMA is when um, it's the green color. And actually, sorry, it should be ABX2. ABX2 plus FMA. And you can see the, the whole, the general, the general downward trend from red to green, red, yellow, and green. For GC, some of the implementation, they are not so fine tuned. And so those giant spy. For us, we only have one weird spy that I will need to explain at some point. But it's uh, not on the um, routing or the FMA. So that one. And you can you can see actually see a similar trending on the latency, even though the, the effect on the latency is not as noticeable as the, the throughput. And we have the same similar pictures. So the that the, the previous graph was compared with the GDC. So now um, isolate the effect of the instruction itself. So in general, the round instruction, if applicable, can improve the throughput by 61%. And the latency, it's, this is actually pretty huge on the throughput because as I, as I mentioned, the general 
routing implementation without the routing instruction is when you pass to back and forth between integers and floating point pipeline. With the uh, FMI actually is very consistent around 20 to 30 percent improvement in the throughput and around 10 percent improvement in the latency. And when we combine both, we got the 74 percent and uh, 16 percent down latency. So here's the plot of the improvement. I think I should make a better plot, but uh, the, the red color is uh, for the FMA improvement. You can see that they hover like the right there. The, uh, the blue one, once applicable, is the routing instructions. It's actually provide a much more improvement in the throughput. This is just the width phase of the, uh, the lock chain function that I mentioned earlier. That show up to the side. And you can see a similar trend improvement, um, but now for latency is much more consistent across the board. So, in conclusion, so using more instructions such, uh, such as the point for routing of a few flags, we can actually significantly improve the throughput and reduce the latency of the map function when applicable. And um, with comprehensive testing with respect to accuracy, it allows us to try various performance optimization without sacrificing the uh, accuracy of the map function. And, but you, you, you can use the compatibility of simply to improve um, to implement those instructions, but be careful with the um, circular dependency you can leave the compatibility themselves. And um, that, so there is the reference to um, other math. Um, Accurate math libraries that I found outside the CRLibent, CRLibent, and the format project. And thank you.